Okay, a little more practice on finding delta H's for unfamiliar reactions. Uh, just to quickly remind you, the system we're using for these is that the delta H for any reaction is the heats of formation for all of its products minus the heats of formation for all of its reactants. And if you haven't seen this before, then you'll see this put into practice in just a moment. Before we do anything thermochemical, we have to get a decent chemical reaction written here where we have these chemicals in a balanced relationship, so let's get that done. Methane and carbon dioxide are produced, <laughs> this one's backwards, when coke reacts with steam. So these are actually the reactants, and these are the things that come out on the other side. This is This happens sometimes. The way you say this in English is not the same way that you would write it. So we have carbon, that's the what metal workers or metal refiners call coke, reacts with steam. And I'm going to make a note that this is water in gas state, and you'll see why in a moment if you don't know already. And the products from that are methane and carbon dioxide. So let's get that balanced. Uh, one carbon, two carbons, that's problematic. Maybe we'll do that. We'll put that off later because I don't know what combination of these two to use to match up the carbon. Uh, there are four hydrogen here, so we must have a two on the steam. Conveniently, that also solves our oxygen problem. We now have two oxygen on the left and two on the right. And this means we have two carbon on the right. We need a two here, and I believe that will do it. Two Cs, two Cs, four hydrogen, check, two oxygen. Yeah, okay, that's all it took. Lovely. So, the delta H for this reaction is the heats of formation of all the products, which means we have one mole of methane. So you jump to this table in your data book, and it's in alphabetical order by English name, so you can find methane. There it is right there in my table. It's CH4. Its heat of formation is minus 74.6. And we only have one mole of it, so it's 1 times minus 74.6. Mathematically, that 1 doesn't need to be there. I'm just putting it there to remind you that we need coefficients. If you leave this out, no problem. All right, there's our methane. And then we have one mole of carbon dioxide, minus 393.5. You see that one a lot because we're always lighting things on fire, so lots of carbon dioxide. If you memorize any of these delta H's, this is probably the first one you'll get. Okay, so that's our products. Minus, now for our reactants. We have two moles of, we need the heat of formation for carbon. Not on our list, do you remember why not? We have carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, but no carbon because carbon's a pure element heat of formation is zero. And then we have two moles of H2O in gas state. And down in the bottom of the list we have H2O gas is minus 241.8. Okay, and now the calculator part happens. Minus 74.6 plus negative 393.5 gives us minus 468.1 minus 0 plus 2 times 241.8 would be 483.6 these negatives cancel and Let's see, negative 468.1 plus 483.6, I get 15.5, positive 15.5 kilojoules. So if you were writing a thermochemical equation here, you could write all this and then put 
13.5 kilojoules on the left side because this reaction is actually endothermic, it requires heat. You put 15.5 kilojoules like so because heat is a reactant, it's one of the things you have to put in to make this reaction go. Or you could write the reaction and on the right side put delta H equals plus 15.5 kJ. Good. And one more where instead of giving the reaction in English, they actually write it out for us. So we have ammonia reacts with oxygen, you get uh, nitrogen monoxide, and uh, this is trouble. They don't say what state this water forms in. If this ever happens and you don't know what state it's in, go with the state at standard temperature and pressure, which is liquid. Think, what, what state would this be in at room temperature? And the answer for water is wa water at room temperature, about 20 degrees Celsius, is liquid. So the question shouldn't have made us guess at that, but it does happen, and when it does, we do have a rule for it. It's used whatever the state is at STP, or sorry, at SATP. So if we're doing products minus reactants, minus reactants, then we have NO, hope that's on our list, yeah it is, NO is nitrogen monoxide, it's plus 91.3, oh, sorry, there we are, so for products we have 91.3, I need to balance this before I dig in, don't I? Let's make, let's get that done. One nitrogen, one nitrogen. Three hydrogen and two hydrogen, that's gonna be trouble. If we make this six, and this six, okay, that balances the hydrogen. Now, so now we have six hydrogen on either side. Now we have two nitrogen on the left, which means I need two nitrogen monoxide. And what does that do to our oxygen? We have three here and another two here, total of five oxygen on the right. So we need a 2.5 in front of this. Okay, so back to products minus reactants. We have two moles of NO, which means we need a two right there. Okay. And then we have three moles of water. Water in liquid state is minus 285.8. Lower than as steam, which makes sense. So that's our products, minus. And for our reactants, we have two moles of ammonia. Second one on the list, minus 45.9. and 2.5 times, you've heard this joke before, the heat of formation for oxygen is zero, which means you can either put a zero or you can just skip it. So let's get this totaled up and see what our number is. By the way, if you use a different data book doing questions like this, it's worth knowing that they differ on the numbers for these. For instance, I know I've seen a data book quite recently where ammonia was listed as 46.1 instead of 45.9. So if that happens, it's okay. It's going to happen in, the, in real life. But so just be aware that if you're calculating a delta H off a table and it's not the standard table, your answer may be different by a, something like a kilojoule at the end. And that's not the end of the world. What as long as you're doing the procedure correctly, that's the big thing. And we're going to give you the standard data book when you get to your exams, and the answers will be based off of that book. So when it matters, have no fear, you will have the right numbers at your disposal. If you go out onto the internet and look up delta H's, that's when you can expect to see slight differences, and they're nothing to worry about too much. So 182.6 would be that number, and then we have 3 times 285.8, so this is minus 
857.4 minus 2 times 45.9 would be minus 91.8 plus 0. These negatives cancel. And so 182.6 minus 857.4 plus 91.8. I get that the delta H for this is minus 583.0 kilojoules. That makes the reaction exothermic, so if you were writing this as a thermochemical reaction, you could either put plus 583 kilojoules on the right side, or you could write the delta H just like this, separate from the reaction.